So now we've got adhesive all over our mat again. Just going to take my adhesive remover, give it a quick spritz. And we're ready to go again. Okay, so now we've got our bird and we've got our wing put together. But um, this wing was a little bit bigger than I had expected it for the bird. So I just grabbed my trusty tonic scissors by Tim Holtz and kind of placed my, my wing on my bird to see how much I, I should start to cut off. And there's no exact science to this. I just trimmed that wing down just like that. So that would be more to size. And it's pretty much personal preference. Um, how you want your bird to look. You can do wings up or wings down. Um, I was trying to make it look like a crow or a raven. Um, so then I also trimmed my bird a little bit. Um, I was looking at pictures of crows or ravens and they don't have um, quite as big of a um, uh, like a roundness right here. So I just took my Tim Holtz scissors and just started to trim off that piece to make it look a little bit more um, not so rounded. And then um, I think I also trimmed the part right here so that his beak would look a little longer and pointier. So you just make it your own is basically what I'm saying. So I've got this piece. So we just um, put a little flower soft glue on the wing here so that it sticks to our bird. And then you get your wing positioned however you like it. Um, sometimes it helps to hold it up right and kind of take a look at where exactly your wing is. Now this flower soft glue will dry clear so you won't have to worry about it being staying white on your black glitter. And then um, you want to take the other side of your bird and glitter side out so you have two right sides out and two wrong sides together, the sides without the glitter. And then just put those together and then you can trim the, uh, that other side of your bird so that you have matching sides. So let's talk a little bit about assembly. Um, we've got the finished product hanging here so that you can kind of compare and contrast what we've got. This is just one part of the chandelier. Um, as we explained earlier, you're going to need two of these in order to make the full um, project. So we've got one full one that will stay intact and will not get cut in half. Um, and it just runs horizontally across your chandelier. Then on your second version, you're going to want to cut it in half this way vertically so that you can put one on either side of your single piece. So I have both of my chandelier pieces here. This would um, obviously be not as flimsy um, if I had my real pieces because I have cardboard and another layer attached to the back. But for demo purposes, I just wanna show you how this works because this might be a little bit confusing. Um, I've just cut one of my pieces in half and this piece will stay as a solid piece. So um, I'm just going to grab a little bit of flower soft glue here and run the tiniest little bead down the center of the chandelier. Okay, and then once you get that done, you're going to take your chandelier, your other chandelier piece, the one that's cut in half, and you're just going to intersect it 
and this is probably the most difficult part of the entire project. I'm going to intersect it with your <laughs> with your your full chandelier piece. Karen was much better at this than I was apparently. Okay. So once you get it stuck down and it'll start to adhere as soon as you get it in place. Um, then once you've got it in place where you want it, you're going to set probably two objects on either side so that it holds at an upright position. Um, I think Karen said she used two full water bottles. Then once you get this one adhered and it's nice and dry, which mine isn't yet so it might fall apart here, but um, you would take your chandelier and tip it this way. Oh, that's pretty good. Um, and then run your other piece this way. And then it all is a, it's a 3D piece. And then after you get those glued together, then you would spray your spray adhesive and do your glitter. So I have already previously cut out our O's from our stamped cartridge. And um, you're going to be selecting on your keypad the shorty um, selection. And we just did an O and it's um, an inch and a half tall for height. So I only cut out four. Um, I think an original or, or virgin, version, um, Karen cut out about 18. So it depends on how long, you, how far down you want your chandelier to hang. So these are basically our chain links. You can certainly ink them with black ink as well. Um, and I, I think Karen used the basil bling paper originally I just have some some grayish silver um, colored paper here but what we're going to do is we're just going to make a tiny little slit like that in each of the links so that we can thread them together and then um, once we get them all threaded together you want to leave one open so that you can thread it through that little um, kind of that eye hook at the top of your chandelier. But um, in order to link these together, and you'll be surprised how seamless it goes actually um, when you get them all linked together. I, I couldn't even tell that they were linked together. So you just link them together like that and then um, grab a little tiny bit of flower soft glue and then just kind of um, push them together and you can use a finger if you want to. Um, and then once that dries, it's you can't even tell you glued anything together. So really, really cool part of the project. Karen gets um, big kudos for that, not only for the full project because it's amazing. Um, we've actually had several customers recently come in and want to know that when this is going up. So I hope everybody's happy. So I would just continue to do that until I've got my desired length attach it to my um, eye hole here at the top of my chandelier and your project is finished. So that's it for today. We hope that you enjoyed our spooky chandelier project. It would be a great um, decor item for if you're having a Halloween bash or a costume party or like we said it would be a perfect addition to a little girl's room in pink or some kind of girly colors. So um, if you should have any questions about what we used or um, any of the steps please let us know. We'd be happy to help you. Um, visit our, our website customcrafts.com for many of the products that we used. Um, and our customer service line is always available to you for any questions or comments that you may have. Um, thanks very much for watching and uh, we'll see you next time.